Welcome back guys, this is Aeneas with more Europa Barbarorum for you. This time I'm going to start a campaign with the Macedonians. These Europa Barbarorum's campaigns are very interesting because they have a more realistic or historical set. It is advised that you use the very hard difficult on campaign difficult and only the hard difficult on battle difficult. This is the Macedonian faction icon and you have a description here which is very long. You have a political, military, also a geographical description of Macedonia which is very nice. If you are interested you can read it. And I am I am only going to tell you that uh, the enemies that Macedonia will face are especially Epeiros, with the famous Pyrrhus of Epeiros, which has now returned from his frustrated invasion of Rome to punish in revenge some of the Macedonians. And also the, the Koinon Elenon at the south with Sparta and Athens, and the Ptolemaio. Uh, in, in Egypt, Egypt and your allies will be mainly the Seleucids and you can establish also an alliance with the Romani so let's go to to the campaign map I will not play any battle I will auto resolve the battle so the game will be faster So you can see here Pella, which is the his, one of the historical cap, capitals of the Macedonian Empire. It's not the first one, but it's the most famous one. Pella was born Philip II and Alexander the Great. And at this point of history, the EV campaign has uh, represented the invasion of Pyrrhus of Epirus, which is now threatening the Macedonian cap, capital and the Macedonian capital has very few men to defend the capital. Also this uh, feature of uh, constructions in the town is a very nice thing in, 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 in Ibi because you have more than the standard vanilla Rome, Rome campaign. For example, in Pella you can see the Aigai or the Macedonian royal tombs and you can see this image is actually from a real tomb which is supposed to be the tomb of Philip II and Philip is supposed to be this this guy killing the I think it's, um, it's a lion and Alexander is this is this young this this young rider at the left of the image so uh, apart from this type of constructions you can also view the type of of government you can establish at a certain region in this case it is a homeland homeland region so the point about the homeland regions is that you can build all the types of of constructions of the faction and you can also recruit all the type of units available to the faction and uh, when you get far away from your homeland you start to have another type of of governments for which are signaled by this subjugation available image. So you can start to, to build another types of governments, which is the case of this number two construction, which is a Macedonian satrapy. So this type of construction is the next to the homeland. And as you progress, you can recruit less uh, faction units and you can start to recruit uh, more auxiliary units so it means that you will have more bar variety but you will also have more 
less control of the population, you have more disagreement with your rule, but you have also more more money because you start to, to tax the people at a higher level, which was the case for an, an imperial rule. Also, so you start with Pella, then you go with Demetrias as the second city in importance for the Macedonian Empire. At some point in history, the Macedonian rulers decided to establish his permanent residence in Demetrias. And then I, this has a normal construction icons. You don't see nothing special as you see here with the Aigai or the Macedonian royal towns. Then you have Chalkis, which was a kind of fortress for the Macedonian armies because it is strategically strategically placed in, in an island so they can resort and protect and start to to muster some units and then attack mainland Greece so that was the function of a city like Chalkis to to work as a fortress from which the Macedonian rulers could build an army and then invade uh, central Greece and at this point you can see that uh, the Macedonian armies are about to start the, si the siege of Athenai and this is our faction leader which is Antigonos Argeades of the Argeadan dynasty of, from which Alexander the Great comes and you have the chance here to recruit this Peltastai and this Totsotai Kretikoi as mercenaries so I will do that because we have to, to take Athenai and you have also another family members which are your brothers so let's go look fast to them you have this Krateros Argeades which is the guy next to Corinthos Corinthos has also a nice building which is the the Isthmus commercial path that is established in this in this section of of the geography so let's is this one is the no this is are the game so this is the Diolcos or the Isthmus Causeway so you have an increase in tradable goods and this was an important uh, commercial spot for ancient ancient Greece and you have also these uh, Olympic Games which are quadriennial or each four years you will have an Olympic Games and this increases the happiness of the population but you also have the the Eastmith Games which are another type of, of games and these are also I, I think these are biannual and also increase the, the happiness of the population so that you can change the the, the the period of from of these games so you have here the quadriennial competitions possibility but you have also the B, the B annual competitions but you will start to pay more because each competition costs money to the states or you have annual competitions so you have more happiness but you have also more taxes and you will spend more in this kind of uh, effort so we will uh, stay with the quadrennial competition so we will also raise the, the taxes to very high taxes because you start with a deficit in money we'll move this unit to help in the siege of Athenai and also these other two units that are in Chalkis and we will disappear this unit we'll, we will disband these units because they can't do anything, they can't travel in, in, through the sea, so they can uh, help me with the invasion of Athenai. So they are useless and, uh, and they are only wasting money from my treasure, so I will disband them. And so we'll, we, we will get closer with these uh, ships. And we will train some units we will, we will train some cheap units and also some units in, in Pella 
to 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 be more prepared for the invasion of the of the Beirut forces. For example, this Alexandro Sarguedes is a very young family member. He has only 20 years. So once the invasion of Athena is done, I will move this this family member to Athena and because Athena's, Athena has an um, academy, it will start to to get to gain some traits. That's a, a, a very nice uh, feature of, of this game. So we will start the siege. And we will build some 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 siege equipment equipment and maintain the siege. And also we will raise the taxes on the other cities. Because we need money. And we have control of the population, so there will be no no unrest and no, no, no revolt. And we will put here a cultural build policy policy. So automatically, automatically, the artificial intelligence will decide which type of business. But because I have no money to spend, it will not build any any building. And I I think that it's better to not train here anyone and move this army to Bella because I have the chance to win. Okay, I started the fight, it was unintended, surely I will lose, but it was going to happen anyway the next turn, so let's go to the, to the altar resolve. I am fighting Pirro Sayakides, which is a very, very, very skilled general, he has a lot of stars, so it, it will be a loss, a defeat for, for, for me, because this uh, kind of statistics count a lot when you are auto resolving battles. Even though the the strength ratio is not so unbalanced, this is very unbalanced. So the Eberots will win surely. So it is a clear defeat, and, and they are finally in Pella after a defeat. So we will retrain these units to have more men, and I think I have. Here, one family member, yes, but I can use it now. So, next turn, I will move this family member to the Metria, so it will start to to train some units. Because if you don't have any family member in the cities, you can't train units. So, let's end season. You see that Corinthians is revolting already. So I was not right to think that it will be not a riot. So some buildings have been damaged in, in the riot in Corinthus, the Nomos Imajos and Foriorius, the Macedonian garrison in Ali the State. And I think that this building let's see what this building is this one, which is the other type of government government. As I show or already showed you the first two types of governments are the homeland and and the next are the Macedonian Satrapia, and these two, and this next type of government is less uh, Macedonian uh, style and more the original culture style. But you have uh, more tax income and you establish a fast government, although not a very Macedonian government, because you see here, public order bonus is minus five percent and public order bonus due to happiness is minus 15% so with those negative bonuses so to say and the very high tax rate uh, I have uh, made a revolt in, in Corinthus not wanting to and you can see here the public order is 40% only so I will reduce to high tax rate and I will try to to move some units, but we can train some units. No, we can't train some units. I guess that's because this building is damaged. So we will repair the building. 
well, I don't have any money. I have a, a deficit in, in the treasure, so I need to finish this stage first, and so I can have more money. So I can assault now that I have some siege weapons. And let's see how this goes on. So it's very in my favor, favor the army strength ratio, and also general wise, I have a better general. This general has only one star, so it will be an easy win for Antigonos Arguedes, the faction leader of Macedon. So let's out resolve, and it is a clear victory. And now Athena is in Macedonia hands. I will occupy, not expel, not slave. I, I am not interested in this type of actions, only to, in occupying. And now I will try to move this this army to Corinthos. So the public order will rise. Now you see it's 150%. I can then put very high tax rates, and it is all still over 100%. This will help the population growth, but Corinthos has a lot of population, so there is no problem. And I will also move this Alexandros Hergiades to Athena, so it will start to learn some nice traits. There, there must be an academy somewhere here. Center conscription, this is the academia. So in the academia, your, your family members can learn a lot of traits when they are young but because when they are older they can't learn anymore so that's very realistic and it seems that the epirots have given given up the fight in this part of the of the campaign so Pella seems to be seems to be safe from the time being but there is no peace, so I will. Well, I can still train any more units because I have a deficit. So let's see the financial status. In next turn, it will rise. I have more projected totals and less expenditure, so it is a question of time. I think Athena has given a lot of money to, to the Macedonian Empire, so I will raise the tax rate to very high tax rate. It is 160% public order due to the military mainly and also the law which is enforced by some public um, buildings and by some traits of your characters and I think we can retrain some units no we can't retrain because we don't have any more money but we can move these units to Corinthos because I have to face the Spartiatai at some point, and I will move also this army. So I have almost a full army in Corinthos now. And uh, the public order in Athena has not reduced importantly, it is at 100%. Uh, we will put a um, cultural build policy so it will get more Macedonian Athena than it will want to be. And I think that's all the way that we can do in this turn, since because we don't have any more money. Uh, at the end of season report, it gives you some statistics on your treasury. And uh, the year in history, well, this is very interesting, but we are not going to stop here a long time, a long time, because there is a lot to read, a lot to read. Sorry, and you will read, for example, what had happened that year in Greece, the Olympic Games, in. Egypt in Rome which, which consuls were in Rome for example so every every year that ends in Europa Barbarorum will drop this the year in history uh, announcement and this is the, the main exp, uh, explanation of the what means the, the year in history in Europa Barbarorum it has a, also a nice a nice explanation of the calendars so I will let uh, to your curiosity if you want to read it get the game and, and also the the modification and the recruitments diplomatic information well diplomatic information are, are the Seleucids have uh, 
uh, broken their alliance, alliances with Pontos, Hayazan, and Bactra, which are factions that are in this part of the bat of the of the campaign map. So there will be some conflict in this, in this area, but it is not important to us. We are concentrated in this part of of mainland Greece and and this other part of of Greece. So let's move our diplomat. We will try to establish some relations with the Romans because the Romans and the Epirots don't like each other. They have just uh, fought a war and, and the Epirots have a loose and that's the reason why you started with that invasion of the Epirots to Pella. So let's finish this turn. Settlement besiege. It is Pella. Let's see the quality of the troops. We have Falangita de Ocero that are the weaker type of phalanxes, and this Galaticoi Cludolon, the Galatian sword, short swordmen, which are a weak unit. I think we can do some good job resisting the, inv the invasion. Uh, we still cannot. Uh, trains units we need another turn the projected totals are still higher than the expenditure so at some point I will have the opportunity to train some units and I think that we can try to to invade Sparth because this uh, army is far away from from the city but we will have to face this this army at some point because Sparta is uh, protected by walls. So I will have to wait. We will have to wait one turn, and in that waiting, I think that this army will attack us. So let's uh, anyway go on with the siege. Start to build these siege weapons and take the siege. And we cannot do much more with these uh, ships, but to look around and see if some enemy ships show and again that's all that we can do at this turn so let's end season so as I told you the, the Spartiata are attacking my, my army I have more men so and uh, the army strength ratio is in our favor but uh, maybe the quality of these troops are much better i think that they have uh, more a lot of uh, spartiata hoplitae and i have as you can see uh, the levy hoplites the hoplitae haploi which are a weak unit i also have the weak phalanxes phalanxes and the mercenaries and these skirmishers, which are weak, with the exception of this Mr. Poroy Peltastai, which were, uh, I think, it, they were a mercenary unit I, we, I recruited on, on the first turn. So I think I, that we will lose. We could withdraw from the battle. But let's, let's try the automatically resolve the battle. So it is an average defeat. As you can see, the, the, the Spartiate killed more men. Uh, we cannot see the units of the Spartiate, but I am sure that they have better units than, than us. And now the Epeirots have taken Demetrius, so we are in trouble. And at least we have 246 Menai in the treasure. It is not enough. The good thing here is that the Spartiata have uh, received some losses also in their army. So we have to do something to, to take back Demetrius and stop 
the ability patient. So you, you cannot recruit from inside a settlement some mercenary units, so we will just go on to attack and see what the result will be. It is in against us, it, it will be a defeat for sure. It, it is a draw. So I guess that the quality of the units and also that I have family members and, and this, this army is only guided by a captain made the difference. So instead of a, a defeat, we have an average and a draw, sorry. And I can move this Alexander Sergiades to to Athena. Well, it has not the, enough movement points. But we will put him in in movement and also this other general to two chalkies. So it will recruit some units at the next turn. And here we are going to no better in Pella. We are going to retrain some units. We cannot retrain some units. They are too costly. And I think that here I cannot retrain some units too. So let's just finish Sensor. And now uh, we are we are besieged by by the Spartiate. Settlement besieged, end of season, and the agent found. Now we have much more money to spend. So we will put these guys to retrain, and we don't have more money to retrain here. Let's see what type, what, what type of army. Let's try to go out and attack them. So it seems against us. Let's see what's the result. It is a draw again. So it seems, it seems that you get some advantage when you are defending from a settlement. And we will place Kratilos Arguedes, which is my brother, and Alexandros Alexandros Arguedes in Athena. So as you saw, the public order changed from red to green and Alexander Sargades is son of Cratero Sargades so that will be all for, for today in this campaign see you at the next video of the Macedonian campaign thank you guys